Hey there everyone, it's JC for another perfect pairing. Foil cards are the hot new system you can add to your crafty stash. I was seriously missing out not having my foil system. Let's use my new favorite hot foil plates for some easy to make rainbow cards. <music> So I shared this card recently over on my Instagram and I got an overwhelmingly positive response on it. So I figured I'd start here and show you all how easy it was to create this beautiful foil card with some new Alta new products. And of course it follows the wonderfully beautiful and universal color scheme of the rainbow. So I'm not going to exactly replicate this. I'm going to reinvent it just slightly, but you'll get the idea of how I made it. Of course, I'll show you that this was made with the Gilded Rose Hot Foil Plate and Stencil Bundle. So the stencil coordinates beautifully with this Hot Foil Plate for easy coloring. And I'm going to start with the Hot Foil Plate first. So I'm starting with a larger piece of cardstock. This is 5.5 by 8.5 because this Hot Foil Plate is larger than an A2 size card front and I want to use the entire um, flower for my card. So I'm just going to plan it for right here. I will end up cutting this image out, but for now I'm just laying it down on this section of my cardstock. For the card I showed you previously, I used this opalescent foil, and I'm going to use it again today for this recreation. And I am planning for enough foil to surround my hot foil plate. Hopefully by now you know the basics of using your hot foil platform. First you would lay down your plate once this platform is hot. Then you would lay your foil shiny side down on top of the hot foil plate. Put your cardstock on top and then lay down your shim if needed as well as the spacer pad and then running it through your manual cutting machine or electric one. But before I do any of that, I like a lot of control when adding my hot foil plates to my cardstock. So my platform isn't hot yet, but before I slide it into the warming platform, I'm going to tape down my cut foil shiny side up now and use a piece of washi tape that has a little bit of the rem adhesive removed and lightly tacking down my foil. Then I will do the same for the hot foil plate. So now that this won't move on my cardstock and now that I have it in a place where I won't waste so much cardstock real estate, I'll show you what it looks like when I move it over to my platform. So this isn't on, this isn't hot right now, but once I have this slid into my platform, and it's hot and I get the green notification light for my system, I can bring this whole piece over, flip it over so that my cardstock is facing me. Then I'll put my thin shim and spacer pad on top. And then I'll press the timer button and wait for that notification light to stay solid green. And then once my, and then once my timer has gone off, and that light stays solid green, I'll crank this through my manual die cutting machine slowly. And then I should have a beautiful debossed foil impression from my opalescent foil and the hot foil plates in the exact spots I want to on my cardstock. Hopefully those are basics for you and you're already familiar with your hot foil system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and show you the end results. All right, so now for the reveal. I know my plate is going to be really hot, but now I'm left with a beautiful impression. It's just absolutely stunning. I love this hot foil plate. So now I can keep working on this. Now that I have my outline, I can use the coordinating stencils for Gilded Rose. So for my rainbow, I picked this family of inks. So that's Red Cosmos, Warm and Cozy, Pocket Full of Sunshine, Green Meadows, Lepi Lazuli, and finally Shades of Purple. And don't forget to check the description box, I'll have all of these linked below. 
And I will have these organized on my desk so I can easily grab the next color when I need it. Before I do any ink blending, I'm going to lay down my silicone stamping mat. This is just going to protect my filming surface, which is also my work surface. And then I'm going to grab my choice of ink blending brushes. This is the set of four, small, and I have two of them so that I can cover each color family, a black and a brown. And then I'm going to simply follow the layering guide that is included in the stencil bifold. And just to stop things from moving around on my craft mat, I'm using scrap pieces of washi tape. And now I sort of pick an orientation of all my colors. I'll go in rainbow order, and I'll mo I usually start at the 12 o'clock position. So I'll go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, just so that they all blend nicely around the rows. And then when I go in order of the stencil, this will go stencil number one, two, three, and four. And I'll work in that order too, from lightest to darkest color. So I'll show you with this first layer, I'm going to grab my red family, small ink blending tool, my lightest ink. In this case, this is frosty pink. And for my card, I'm going to work outside in, ink blending on one sixth of this rose and gently working my way into the center. Without removing my stencil, I'll move on to the second color. This is Sunkissed and my orange ink blending tool. To the right of Frosty Pink, I'll apply a little bit of Sunkissed. And I will overlap my previous color, but then also ink blend into the next sixth of this rose. Next, I'll grab Citrus Burst and my yellow blending tool and essentially repeat this step on this portion of the rose. And then I will keep working around my rose with all these layers of color. I'm deliberately leaving out some areas of white just so that it gives a little bit more of a crystalline appearance. And that finishes my first series of colors. Now I will move on to the next color in all of my ink pads and use stencil number two so I like the saturation of color for my stencil one layer. So I'm going to reveal that. And then I will really easily orient and layer the second stencil. And then I will use the next color in these layering inks in all of my ink families. I will follow the previous placement of the color family in that same location on my rows. So I have the red section here on the sixth of my rows. So I will only apply the second color in that section of this rose. Then I will repeat that with the next value of color on the orange section of my rose. And I will repeat this around the flower just as previously shown. And now I will reveal the second layer to this rose. The third and fourth layers are on the same stencil, so I will orient the third layer on top of my already ink blended rose. Then I will apply the third darkest ink on my third layer of my stencil, and I will be pretty light handed with this layer. And here is the third layer. And then finally, I'll do the fourth layer. And you'll see with this last stencil layer, I only needed the red, orange, and purple families, depending on where you start in your rows. And that is the final layer of this beautifully holographic and dimensional flower. So all my stencils are still dirty. I'm going to leave this that way because I'm going to use this ink in just a few moments here. But for now, what I'm going to do is cut out this rose image and I'm going to leave a white outline as if I have a dye for this holographic rose. And I'll just use my craft scissors to do that. So my final fussy cut rose is going to be larger than an A2 size card front. And I love that because what I can do is fake uh, two die cut roses essentially by offsetting my rose off of my cardstock just like so. So I will be left with this much of the image. I'll use a pencil to mark 
where I want to cut my rows on my paper trimmer. So I'll follow this line. And so now what I'm left with, and what I've done is faked that gates fold kind of card front. And that essentially finishes the layout of this card is this sort of focal flower here with its supporting element here and it all fits on my card front. Now I mentioned I didn't clean the ink off my stencils. I will use that to my advantage. I'm going to take sterling silver, so that's this one right here, on the 14 metallic watercolor pan set. And then I'll pick a little bit of that sterling silver pigment up, rub it into the ink to suspend, and then add coordinating metallic splatter. So as to keep my pan color clean, I'm going to wipe in between every application of splatter, just like that, just so I don't get the ink inside my pan. And now that should make this card really shine. So my splatters have dried back and nothing is glued down yet. So I will work on adding my sentiment to my card. I love the scripty fonts in Paint of Flower subscription. And Paint of Flower Sunflower is no exception to that. So what I used in my previous card is You Are My Sunshine. And I just I always find that so fitting for my rainbow card. So I'm just going to use that again so that it looks something like this. To do that, I'm going to use a stamp positioning tool. And like I said, I want to center the sentiment on my card. So I'm going to center my stamps on my splatter background piece. And this is what my flowers were laying on top of earlier. So I like that placement on my card front. And although I won't see this, on my background piece. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it for consistency's sake. So this is the Altenew Obsidian Pigment Ink. I find that this lays on top of foiled elements really well once it dries back. And now I will place my halves on my card front. Ink up my stamp with Obsidian Pigment Ink. And then stamp on top of the flower. And then I will repeat that with the other half of the rose and align my cut edge on the rose with the left side of my cardstock this time and then stamp my sentiment on top. So now I have my three pieces to my card. I went ahead and glued down my splattered background piece to my folded note card base. And then I'll start assembling my card from background to foreground. So here's my background. Here's my next foreground element. And to the back of this, I'm going to apply strips of Altenew Instant Dimension Foam Tape. So once I remove the release paper from this half of the rows, I'm going to align the sentiment to my reference lines. So I have this line, but also the lines in my sentiment. And then once I have a good continuous line I'll press down on my instant dimension foam tape and then I will repeat that on this half of the rows and now my sentiment is continuous and so is my image placement the final touch to my card is just a few satin white sequins and that finishes this rainbow opalescence rose with a nice feature sentiment right in the center and of course, in the comments, let me know which one you prefer of the Gilded Rose Hot Foil Plate. So for my next perfect pairing, so here's the thing about watercolor backgrounds, right? Is I love them, but I can never get them to stay flat again. Or if I try to emboss over them, I can never get really great crisp impressions. And that's just the nature of cold pressed watercolor paper. And the Altenew Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper Pad is an excellent addition to my Crafty Stash. And I wanted to show you a beautiful way to foil emboss on top of this textured background that is so characteristic of cold pressed watercolor paper. So I'm going to quickly make a watercolor background using the Altenew Round Brush Set. And I'll use the number 18 paddle brush. And then I'll use the Altenew 
And then I'll use the 36 watercolor pan set. Mine is very well loved, obviously. So I like the saturation on my background. So I'll let this dry back. So I've dried back my watercolor background. So I neglected to mention earlier that my watercolor panel is larger than an A2 size card front. So I'm just using the white cardstock to trace an outline of where I want to cut later. New from the November 2021 hot foil plate release is the Sunburst Doily hot foil plate and die set. And just like the opalescent foil goes well with rainbow palettes, I think gold, I mean, always goes so well with rainbow cards. So I'm going to cut, just like the previous card, a piece of foil that is slightly larger than my hot foil plate. I am going to center my hot foil plate, my sunburst doily hot foil plate, onto the center of my tr pencil tracing of an A2 size panel. And I'm also centering the foil at the same time. And once I have the placement that I want for my plate, foil, and watercolor background, I'm going to use that washi tape again to hold everything down. So now that everything is in place, I'm going to follow the same orientation that I did earlier on my hot foil system, which is over to the side again. Okay, so after running this through my manual die cutting machine, I can reveal the foil on my background. And while you can get the same effect by using embossing, nothing quite beats the texture and the feel of hot foil. It just looks so much cleaner and the shine is of course so much more brilliant when you use a hot foil system and so I'm really glad I got one. It took me a long time but I, I'm glad I finally got one. So once my plate is uh, cool enough to maneuver, I'm going to keep overlaying foil and building up my watercolor background. I can use some of these offcuts to add more foil elements to my card and then I'm doing a repeat pattern as if I'm doing repeat stamping on my background and you can definitely do this with foil too you know the problem with heat embossing sometimes is if you heat and reheat sometimes it changes the texture of the embossing powder and you lose some of its shine and brilliance but hot foil you can just keep running this through and it doesn't change the sheen at all and so there's my next impression is this top part. And so I'm going to keep repeating the doily motif all around my watercolor background as much as I can fit on here. So after foiling my entire background, before I trim off the excess around my watercolor panel, I'm going to add gold pearl metallic watercolor to fill in some of the spaces around the doilies and to really fill in this background. And I'm using the same watercolor brush this is one of the Altenew watercolor brushes. After adding the metallic watercolor splatter and letting my panel dry back, I adhered it to my folded note card base. And to keep this perfect pairing really, really simple, I already die cut and layered the Congrats die set. That's also new from the November 2021 release. And I'm going to adhere it right to the center of my card. And after adhering that to my foil rainbow background, that finishes this really, really easy, perfect pairing. I figured I'd let the rainbow background take center stage on this card, as I already think there's a lot of stuff to look at on this card. So I will just leave it as is. My series encourages you to shop your existing Altenew stash and rekindle their love with newer releases. Perfect Pairings with JC airs on the Altenew channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Perfect Pairing episode with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello there, crafty friend Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques, and tutorials are just like this by subscribing to the Altenew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.